pause and read the disclaimer. This video is a full concept for a mod idea that I had at like 3 a.m. two weeks ago. The inherent idea is based off of a pretty simple line of thought. Are there any nocturnal creatures in Rain World? I mean, the answer seems to be no. The rain just takes place all at night, and therefore nothing can actually leave to get food, and therefore nothing can live. But I think that's lame. So I came up with this, a mod idea that will probably never actually exist because it's way too ambitious. Now, the night mod entails a different kind of cycle called a night cycle. The trigger for a night cycle to start is relatively simple. It's just random chance. Every time you rest, there is a 1 out of 4 chance that the next cycle will take place at night. A night cycle has the light levels lowered significantly, down to around memory crypts level. Different creatures will spawn, and those that do will act differently. Some of the creatures that duck out at night include most lizards, batflies, vultures, and squid katas. Now, the creatures that show up more often at night are pretty predictable. Spiders spawn in regions they shouldn't, and centipedes are more common in general. In order to properly put forth my ideas, let's do it in a cool little storytelling fashion. You know, what I'm good at. This is our slug cat. He has just woken up in outskirts or something like that. He exits his shelter to find that the region is a lot darker than he remembers. Well, whatever. He needs food before he can rest again. He doesn't want to starve. He exits to the left and enters a pipe. Once he enters into the next room, he finds that the lighting has truly changed. Everything now covered in an eerie glow from the moon being obscured by the thick clouds. He continues moving. However, he notices different clumps of different looking mushrooms now grow up from the ground. Grabbing one and tasting it, it causes his vision to become blurry, but restores one pip of hunger. These mushrooms fill out our first night-specific organism, known as the Sun Stair Shrooms. They are mushrooms that glow in a variety of colors from green to blue to purple, with wide tops and thick stems. They grow in clumps of two to three and restore one pip of hunger when eaten. However, this is a trade-off, as they also blur your vision and cause the screen to sway ever so slightly back and forth, an effect similar to what would come from staring into the sun. Eating another mushroom while the effect is still in motion causes the duration to be increased and the effect to be doubled. The slug cat, who is definably really feeling it now, decides not to eat any more of these strange fungi and continues onwards, hoping to find a less dubious source of food. He goes down into a room he recalls having bat flies in it, but they're nowhere to be found, as they are purely diurnal. Instead, there sits three small brown grubs on the floor. These are our second night-specific organisms, being the grubs of the dropwigs, or also the egg bugs if you subscribe to the theory that they're the same thing, but that's off topic. These grubs spend most of their time underground during the day, but at night they emerge to find food in the form of small insects. Whenever one of these creatures is grabbed, they will let out a high-pitched squeal, which alerts all of its kin nearby to begin to burrow back underground, a process that takes about three seconds. Once they're fully burrowed, they are unable to be brought out by the slug cat's hands. Our slug cat grabs in each one of these. I mean, it's okay. It restores one pip of hunger, and the other two immediately begin to burrow after it screeches out. Suddenly, the pipe on the left of the room glows brown, and a medium-sized creature emerges. It looks like a smaller variant of the Miros bird, able to fit through pipes. Its mouth is replaced with a long, needle-like beak. It quickly runs over to the spots where the grubs have burrowed, and digs its beak into the dirt, pulling a grub out and swallowing it quickly. This is our third night-specific organism, known as the Needle Bird. It runs quickly through rooms, looking for its favorite food, the previously mentioned grubs. If the grubs have already burrowed, it will spend about two seconds digging them out of the ground. If not, it will use its beak to stab the grub. If the slow cat attacks the bird, it will prioritize running away, but will not hesitate to fight back if cornered. The bird spots our slug cat and runs away after eating just one grub. The slug cat follows the bird into the next room, curious at what it has just seen. In this room, it spots lights in the distance, before recognizing it as a roaming group of scavengers, all holding lights and spears. They are extra paranoid and spear slug cat if it goes within sight of them. These roaming groups of scavengers contain around three to five individuals, and rarely ever split up and leave each other's sides. That's an easy way to get picked off by the creatures of the night. These groups are uncommon, usually with only about one per region. The scavengers move forward, but are stopped in place by a loud hiss which echoes off the walls around them. They spot something moving in the darkness. 
before the shadow lunges forwards. A twisted maw with rings of teeth on tentacle-like mouthparts flies towards the scavengers. Surprisingly, it's a lizard. I stole this idea from a member of my Discord, by the way. It is a nightcrawler lizard, with zero bioluminescence and poor but still present eyesight. They act as more threatening black lizards, more like a mix between black and cyan, actually. They chase after Slugcat or other creatures, and will primarily notice creatures holding lights. Otherwise, they will rely on their hearing like black lizards. When they notice prey, they will let out their signature hiss before walking towards its current location. Once it's within range, it will use its flat tail to launch itself towards a target, wrapping its terrifying mouth around the target's head and flailing it around. But you know, if you ignore the demon mouth, it's kinda cute, right? Ignoring the events that just occurred, Slugcat exits into a completely separate room. However, odd sounds are heard coming from just off-screen, like knives stabbing into dirt. The noise is near him, and he spots a creature wandering in from the side of the screen. Its head has a large source of bioluminescence, so bright it lights up the area around it. Five legs with sharp tips let it crawl over terrain, two in the back and three in the front. This is our largest night-specific organism, and the second largest creature in the entire game, known as a strider. Its head appears like a lighthouse, bathing the room in yellow light. Its legs are very sharp, stabbing into the ground and through creatures that are in its way. For this reason, most creatures evade its yellow light. These creatures' unnatural nature is explained by an apparent lack of any biological functions. They are fully robotic, likely being a method of scouting the land around old cities for runaway criminals and potential resource deposits. Due to this purpose, when this creature is attacked, it will turn hostile, its light going red. When in this state, the Strider will move quickly over to any threats and attempt to eliminate them as best as possible. The Slugcat manages to squeeze past this threat by going underground, and emerges into a new room, with a large dark sky above it. He trods carefully below the blackness before he hears a swoosh and buzzing behind him. Looking up, he sees two bright white eyes before a large body crashes down behind him, a shadow darting around the air and ground. It lunges towards him and sinks its teeth into his hind, but he manages to toss a spear at it to escape. This is another night specific organism, the Devil Fly. A bat fly adapted for nighttime predatory hunting. It has grown to significant sizes, almost as big as a lizard. It walks like a bat on the ground and flies at very fast speeds in the air, making a loud buzzing speed as their wings beat very quickly. They function similar to vultures, though they often hunt in packs of two to three. They are no bigger than a green lizard, but prey on targets even larger than themselves, adapting a hit-and-run style similar to velociraptors against bigger prey. A determined pack of devil flies can even take down a reindeer. During the darkest of nights, people say they are only visible by their burning white eyes and the sounds they make. The slug cat barely manages to escape by entering a pipe just in time, and moves on to the next room. As he does, he spots some remaining food hanging down from a building, but he sees something move in the distance. Two bright lights suddenly turn on, spotlights. They scan around the area, just barely missing our small boy. The two lights move over to the side of the room, spotting a nightcrawler lizard in ambush mode. The light easily illuminates the poor creature. A loud howl is heard, and a large body moves in, tackling the creature to the ground and biting it before soaring away, taking the lights with it. This is our final night-specific organism, a larger vulture variant known as the Spotlight Vulture. This creature's head is weighed down by two massive mechanical spotlights that serve as its eyes. When hunting, it will perch atop some scenery and stay perfectly still until it senses movement. When it does, it will turn its lights on and scans the room with them from right to left. When these lights spot a creature, they will lock onto them. Upon being locked on successfully for more than a second, the vulture will swoop down to grab the creature, pulling it away. Its flight patterns are much faster, and they are overall bulkier than even the king vultures. Despite these beefed up stats, if the vulture misses its initial swoop, it will be stunned briefly, taking about two seconds to reorient itself before scanning the room again for its slippery prey. If its scan takes up no results, it will return to its perch. As the vulture carries its prey away, the slug cat hears something in the distance. A rumbling. He's heard it a billion times before. The distant sky is lit up by strikes of lightning that approach and increase in frequency as the rain nears. The slugcat grabs two fruits and runs for his shelter. 
Luckily, he is able to find one just before the lightning strikes, just outside, with the rain following. He rests with about four new lifelong scars, hoping the next cycle is a much brighter one. That was my concept. Pretty rough, but I thought it'd be cool. Of course, it's a pretty hard mod to get working, but that's why I'm not the one actually working on it. I'm about as averse with programming as I am with the dark side of the moon. That being said, as stated in the disclaimer, if you want to take a shot at bringing this video to life, be my guest. Also, this video is technically my 3K special, uh, by all means. I would like to thank all the artists that helped me out with this. Y'all have been a lifesaver and definitely increased the quality of this video by about tenfold, considering that my art is, like, decent at best. Anyway, that's about all. Uh, you should expect more highly edited videos from me, as uh, I'm finding doing the highlights is a bit more boring than what I usually like to do. So, if you like my more edited videos, good for you, uh, because that's what's happening more often. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, I will see you all next time, probably in like two weeks, or maybe faster, I'm not really sure, bye.